Hey everybody, this is World War Guy here today, and today I'm doing an update video on my helmet collection. Now for those who have seen me since the very beginning, about my fifth video in, or fifth video ever posted, I only had about 15 helmets. Now, as of February 22nd, 2020, I have about 38 helmets. So you can see, I improved my collection quite a bit. It has grown significantly. Now, unfortunately though, this is gonna be a two-part video. Uh, I upload my YouTube videos from iMovie off my phone, and for whatever dumbass reason, it can't be more than 15 minutes. And I've tried, I just can't get this video under 15 minutes. So we're gonna do, do yeah, we're gonna do two parts. We're gonna do one half, and then the second half I'm gonna post right after. So make sure you check out that second half. But for now, let's just go in, let's talk about the helmets, and see how cool they are. All right, so the way I put in, put on, yeah, put my helmets, is I put them by country, and then in that country, I put them by the earliest helmet to the latest helmet. So that's how we're gonna roll with this. And we're gonna start off with Germany. I know you guys love German helmets. So we first have the German M16 helmet from World War One. This one's a relic condition. It's missing one of the lugs, as you can see there. No liner, it's got some holes in there. Uh, but this is still a nice helmet, I'm glad to have it. That's the M16 German helmet. Next, in World War II, we have the German M40 helmet. So this was, you know, developed around 1940. Uh, this one's another relic condition. As you can see, it's also been smushed. But hey, it's a German helmet. Can't go wrong with it. All right, moving on. Let's see this really nice helmet. The German M42 helmet with original paint and the German Army decal there. Inside, you're missing most of the liner, but you still have the liner band and a little tiny bit of the chin strap. And on the inside, I'm gonna try to put it right side up. I think this is right side up. Anyways, if you can see it, at the top left of the screen there, uh, there's some markings from the stamp that was in there. So a lot of the German helmets, they had stamps done in the dome, because uh, I guess Germany, Germany at the time loved stamping things, marking things. So yeah, this is a really nice helmet, good item to have in my collection. All right, moving on, we have another German M42 helmet. This one's another relic condition one. Inside, you have a little bit of the paint left. I'm gonna try to put it in the sun, maybe, nope. You guys can see that, kind of an apple green color. Uh, this one's possibly a late war production, considering that if you see the air vent holes from the split bin holes on each side are different dis distances. So it's possible, you know, they were just rushing through, didn't even try to align it correctly. That's my theory. All right, moving on, let's go over here. We have the World War II German Piv helmet, the second model. So this is what the Africa Corps would have used in North Africa. Uh, this one is missing the shields on the side. And then inside the chin strap, as well as the liner, is a bit busted. Uh, this one is made in 1942. There you go. APN. Come on. 1942, size 56. And I read somewhere online when I got this helmet that the reason why there's a stamp Germany, so English for you know Germany, Deutschland, uh, is because when GIs wanted to bring this back, I guess they would stamp it in there as a you know kind of a proof mark that's what i read uh, and hopefully it's true and not a you know scam or anything but yeah so it's pretty cool all right cold war years when germany split up or was split up you have the east german m56 no m53-76 Ooh, hopefully i got the numbers right uh, so this is what the east germans basically wore the entire cold war uh surprisingly enough it was actually a design from 1943 during world war ii but that was never approved for the German army. Inside, you have a pretty silly looking liner, but it's actually quite comfortable. You have some foam padding in there, some like suede leather and a plastic uh, dome at the bottom there. Four point chin strap. And oddly enough, not that uncomfortable. Weird helmet, but it's not uncomfortable. All right, moving on. Some more German M40 helmets. That's odd, I kind of might have skipped it. No, actually. These are Finnish M40-55 steel helmets. This one in particular was refurbished to look like a World War II German M40 uh, 
helmet. You can see it has the repro decal on it, repro liner, repro chin strap with new paint and texture, and basically a cheap alternative to getting a, an original one. This is basically what it would look like. Now, the actual finish M40-55 would have looked something like this. You have, you know, smooth paint. It was kind of an elephant gray color. You have their version of the liner, which was bright yellow or white or brown as well. Uh, their chin straps. And also their helmet is varied in color. You had, you know, this color. You had green. You had, you know, different shades of gray and green and so on. But it varied quite a bit. As well, some also had another hole here for the liner. So M or finish M40-55. All right, now going to the Adrian helmet family. All right, the French M15 helmet. The French were basically the first uh, army to develop a steel helmet during World War I, and then everyone soon, very soon, followed right after. So this is a chasseur. The French had different badges depending on what unit you were in. So you had chasseur, infantry, artillery, medical, engineer, etc. And on the inside here, you have the liner, no chin strap, unfortunately, but nonetheless, this is a very nice helmet to have. And basically the helmet that started it all. And then after World War I, but before World War II, the French decided that it'd be a good idea to update their helmets to the M26 Adrian helmet. So basically I have a video explaining this more in detail, but basically it's a more improv or improved version of the Adrian helmet. Inside, this one has a repro liner with a repro chin strap, original paint, and this badge is either original or reproduction, but I'm not sure, no way of knowing. And here we have another M26 French helmet. This one is for the artillery, as you can see with two cannons there. This one has original paint. This is the original badge. And inside you have a original chin strap and original liner. So very good example. Glad to have this one in my collection. Now the Adrian helmet is actually quite popular, if not the most popular helmet used uh, in Europe, as well as even other countries outside of Europe, such as Peru. Uh, but yeah, a lot of other countries use them. And one country that did use them was Spain. You know, during the Spanish Civil War, Spain bought a lot of helmets from different countries, you know, from uh, Germany, from France, from uh, Portugal, I believe, I'm not sure. Uh, from Czechoslovakia and so here is the Spanish contract M26 the French did not make any holes here for the badge because the Spanish you know didn't need it you have original liner original chin strap here you have two tones so it came in the brown but then the Spanish who owned this went ahead and painted like a forest green and on the on the inside there's a name inside Check my update video to hear more about this helmet. Yeah, this is a very nice helmet to have. All right, and another example of countries or of a country who used and adopted the Adrian helmet was Belgium. And during World War I, they used French made M15 helmets and then just painted them their own color and had their own badge on the front, uh, which is this example here. This one does not have a liner, unfortunately, but everything else is original to it. Here's another Belgian M15. This one was made by Fonson Bruxelles. And this is basically a post-war one because they made their helmets in the 20s, but it's an exact example, or it's a perfect example to show you what the Belgians used during World War I. You know, their liner and chin strap and so on. All right, then after World War I, the Belgians also decided it'd be a good idea to update their helmets, which is why we have the M26-31 helmet. Basically the only difference from the French version is the visor flares out a bit more. So this one's a bit more flat while the French one went more down. This one's black for the gendarmerie, which is basically the police, which is black. And then here the line is also improved to a bit more pronounced and a bit of a meaner look. This one has no liner. So you can see some writing there that we'll never know what it was. But now here is what the Belgians used, or the Belgian military used during World War II. The Belgian M26-31, exactly the same as the gendarme one, but it was in the infantry brown color. This one has the original liner, original chin strap, and this one's actually named 
with hope or possibly the soldier's serial number. It's a very nice example. I've been wanting one of these for a very long time. And just look at that. That is really cool if you ask me. All right, we're gonna do three more helmets for the first part. Then the second part, we'll do the last of them. Sticking with Belgium, we have the post-war Belgian dispatch rider helmet, which was modeled off the British dispatch rider helmet. So basically it's a sort of fabric, you know, compressed something helmet, so it's not steel. Then you have a leather protector for the neck and the ears because you'd be on a motorcycle and it's kind of a good idea. And here you have a very simplistic liner there. So this is the dispatch rider helmet. And also post-World War II, the Belgians adopted the M1 helmet. So this is the M1 Belgian clone. Uh, basically it's the exact same as the American one, except the paint is smooth, there's no texture. You have the Belgian flag there and you have a Viet Vietnam style or Vietnam era liner or chin strap. This one has no liner, but it's basically the exact same as the American ones, just with Belgian specifications. All right, last helmet for this part. You have the Italian M33 helmet. This one, I was told that it was made during World War II, but of course you have the post-war green paint on it, as well as I believe post-war liner and chin strap. So you can see it's not in the best condition in here, but nonetheless, it's a good example and it is the exact same style of helmet that was used by the Italians during World War II. All right, so that concludes part one. Stick around, we're gonna see part two in a quick second and you're gonna be able to see all those cool helmets. See you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed.